Just quickly, Real Madrid manager Carlo Ancelotti said Kylian Mbappe is down. Has the determination to come through a difficult period. Yeah, of course we'll he talk has. About that the man's won the World Cup, scored actually get another. He's fine. He's only about ten, isn't he? <laughs> uh, Man City boss Pep Guardiola has been speaking to the media ahead of his side's trip to Brighton tomorrow. He was asked if he's had to reassure his players following three defeats in a row. Wow. I don't think so. We said that, that, that of course we are not used to play three games in different three competitions, but it's football. It's happened, so we know the reason why we are struggled. And but. Yeah, looking forward to that game and after international break and after that um, a few players will come in back better and recover and for all the problems that uh, we have, uh, a little problems that every player has, we will solve it. It's very bizarre, isn't it? For the first time since 2018, Man City have lost three games on the bounce with all three defeats coming in three different competitions. They go at Brighton tomorrow, Ben, at half five. Mm-hmm. What's, I mean, it looks to be another massive game for them. What What do you make when you're when you've been in a dressing room and you've been going through a bad run of form yourself? How difficult can it be to to drag yourself out of it? Because I mean, it's a bit difficult for me because obviously a lot of the like, few of the clubs I played for it was pretty much difficult for season upon season, Games, <laughs> week on week. <laughs> but no, do you know, for Man City I, again, they've lost for the underbounce. They've lost Champions League, Premier League, and EFL Cup, right? And they're still only because they're because they're three separate competitions competitions. That's why I think Pep's just like, okay. Because there's still only two points. Yeah, we, if it was we, all three league games, totally different. You know, all, but yeah. for as, as bad as Man City have been in this period, and Liverpool, we, we've absolutely sang the plaudits of Liverpool, and rightly so, top yeah. of the Premier League. Man City are two points behind, that's it. Liverpool draw, Man City win. There we go. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. it'll be a difficult game though, because I, I, I like Brighton. I like the way that they play. Um, when you look at the way Brighton... At home, that's my only thing about Brighton, and... They've been better of late at home, but at home it used to be such a problem for them. Why, I don't know. I almost felt like they were better suited away from home, but I do think um, for Brighton, it's about the start against Manchester City. I think when Brighton go after teams and they move the ball quickly from left to right, they get it to the two wide players, I think they can cause problems. But if they allow Manchester City to go there, dominate possession, keep possession, then that's where it could be a long afternoon. But I think what Man City have shown in these last three games is that they, they can be beat. Yeah. Like we, we all know they can be beat. Where, where do you think the problems are? Because they have got an aging midfield. Defensively. Yeah, defensively they look yeah. very weak. Now, I, I'm not saying, I don't know if it is defensively or the fact Rodri's not in front to protect them. Maybe. But, I mean, some of the opportunities have been given away. I mean, I mean, was it the Wolves game, right? They they won the Wolves games, right? Yeah. 2-1. Oh, my goodness. Traore was running past Walker like... Pfft, like not Traore, not uh, Wolves, <laughs> Fulham. That, yes, the, that's right, yeah, That game there where they won 3-2, Fulham caused them so many problems they should have won. And that was the first time I went... I'd seen Carl Walker be run. Uh, Adama should have scored a few goals. So they are definitely... And even the Southampton game, where it yeah. should have been more comfortable, they are giving up more chances. But, but do you find, right, so the last game they played in Europe was against... Um, Sporting, where right. Jokar is, wow. Okay, but they had chance after chance after yeah. chance in the first half. Do you feel that if Haaland's not scoring, they struggle? Yeah, a little bit. And that's where they need to find goals from other areas because, listen, he's the best centre forward on the planet. Yeah. That, that's just mm, him or Kane, I'd say. I'd still put Kane in that discussion. Yeah. But... For Haaland, it is so evident that if he doesn't score, no one else really steps up at, at the minute. And that's where you've got to look at the likes of Foden, um, Bernardo Silva, uh, Doku, these guys, and go, come on. Yeah. If he's not scoring, it, he can't be the main source of goals. We need goals from other areas. It's very difficult to, to criticise Pep because he's probably, well, he is the best manager on the planet, right? Mm. But not replacing Alvarez and not selling him when he did. That's huge, isn't it? You know what? You say that, right? And you, you listen, at the minute, it, pro- it it seems to be correct. But how many times has he sold players and we've gone... Yeah. We've gone. When would he sold Jesus and Zinchenko and... The same person. Sterling. Yeah, Sterling as well. <laughs> um, Cancelo, who's the best right back, the best left back in the, the yeah. country the season before. Yeah. When, and Mahrez. I know, but he, he, he does replace them, right? Not really. He just almost goes, right, we'll find a different way. Mahrez, when he let him go, they've let so I many... I know, players. but he, they let... What's his name go? Um, who's the Argentinian in the forward? Alvarez. No, 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 the little fella before him. It was amazing. Aguero. Yeah. They let him, Harlan's come in. Yeah, right? but we've also seen him win the league without a centre forward. So I, I do I do think they've got options of doing that, but I think once Man City get back on track, here we go. Because they, they, they are not one of those clubs and teams we've seen it for year upon year. They're not a club that will like go through this period here, then win one game, then maybe draw... Then, do you no, I mean? they won't lie down. No, they'll, they'll win the next one and then go on like a 10-game winning uh, well, streak. So they have done that for the last however yeah. many years. But if they lose, or 
if they don't get a result against Brighton, I mean, a draw is as bad for them, right? No. Or you just think stop the rock? No, it's not bad for them. And they're, again, like no other team because, yes, they're not playing well. And you're right, if they only draw and Liverpool win, the gap will be then four, five points. So the gap's two Two. at the moment. Two, four. Yeah, right. So the gap will be three points, five points. No, no. What is it? The gap's two at the moment. Yeah. So if Liverpool win, it's five. Yep. And Man City get a draw, it's four. Yeah, four points, yeah. That's what I thought. Um, Why didn't you go on the <laughs> show yesterday? <laughs> so, um, but then Man City know when it comes crunch time, after Christmas, all the players are coming back, bar Rodri, they're like, okay, it's, mm. it's go time. They, w- they would have figured it out by then. How do you see the game going tomorrow? I think they'll win 2-1 against Brighton. Do you? Yeah. Big game. I bet Welbeck, score, big, I bet Welbeck scores there. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker Talk Sport